physical characteristics that, that help you in your sport and so on. So you're all gifted up there. So what can separate the guy from first and second and third? It's it's all up there. That's that's the key. How did you develop your mindset? Was that something that you always had? Or was it something that you developed as you were training? I think it's something I already, already had. And uh, I kind of left home when I was 16. So I was out on my own on the ah. street. And, uh, you know, you're either going to get smart and... You know, look after yourself, or you're going to fall down. There's nobody there to catch me. So, that was there from a from an early age, I think. And uh, I was just very determined to, to do this thing that I felt I could be good at, in order to change my life and change, you know, uh, the projection of my life for uh, the people around me. Um, I was grew up on a housing estate in UK. I had no education. I was in a jail when I was 18. So I had all that. That was, you know. The people around me, I was like, I didn't want part of that future. I wanted to do something else, and I got this thing that I was good at, so I'm going to take it and run with it, you know? It's crazy how many people have similar stories. Oh, they're like, no, <laughs> that's it. That's enough. Because every set, bar the warm-up sets, you got to warm up, and you know, to be safe and everything. But the set, the real sets, I call them, we're going to go to absolute failure and even beyond with force reps, with assistance reps, maybe extra negative reps, which is... Um, something that most people neglect when they lift weights they think you know i've lifted it all right boom let it go down i've lifted it but they're they're neglecting the lowering part of the weight the negative so i get people to really slow that down so you're taxing that part as well and even at the end of the set on some exercises with machines where it's practical so you you know you can't curl anymore physically on the positive on the contraction but your strength on the lowering is greater so if you did curls and you failed, I could lift the weight to the top for you, and you could lower it down for probably another three reps. So if you'd just gone to failure here, you wouldn't have exhausted the, the negative part of the rep. So my thing is I exhaust everything. It's totally fucked. You can't lift, you can't lower it, you can't lift it. It's total failure. If you do that once on an exercise, then time to move on, do another exercise. How did you develop your protocol? Just trial and error? Trial and error, and more about the insecurity of the guys competing. Like, why don't you learn yourself and listen to your body? And, and I, I used to make notes, you know, every week I'd write down my diet. I'd write down every single workout that I ever did from 1984 to 1997 I have in a training log. You should I, sell that. I Print it. Maybe, yeah. Print it's, it, it's, put it's, it in it's a book. A, it's in all it. these little exercise books, you know, and like you can see the first one when I'm like 21 years old. It's a bit childish with the comments. On, but it's like, you know, I felt shit today. This was a shitty workout. Never fucking let this happen again. You know, all this <laughs> stuff I'm talking to myself. So I got all this and it's to go back and look at it sometimes. And it's weird because I can go back to 1988 and I can look in my book and I look at that workout and I was like, I was in this gym and I was training with this guy. And I can even remember like I was like what I was wearing and I can go back in time and remember wow. that workout. Just from those notes. Yeah. Like every workout, as soon as I've got home and I finished, I was like, hey, bench press, I did this. And every month I would make notes and I'd say, okay, this is what I'm doing now. These are my goals for the next four weeks. You know, whatever, like little goals. Like I'm going to put five pounds on my bench press. But if you do that every month, then at the end of the month, you got, you know, in the end of the year, you got 60 pounds, right? So <clears throat> uh, I did all these things like, you know, uh, mental rehearsal, um, visualization, all this stuff. I did it. I just, I kind of learned it. Nobody, nobody taught me. So um, that was one of the things, goal setting, right? And writing it down on a piece of paper, just, and the, you can do this with anything, your business, whatever. You're writing it down on a piece of paper. You're making a commitment. It's fucking there on a piece of paper. Every day you can look at that. And that just gives you a stronger mental vision. And instead of saying, right, I'm going to win this contest in 18 months' time, yeah, that's cool. You're going to win that contest. But how are you going to get there? It's like saying, I'm going to sail to Australia. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's cool. But how are you going to get there? Have you got a plan? Have you got a map? Or like, fuck, you're going to go with no map. You're just going to get lost, you know? So Alcohol. alcohol. Sign it. You fucking put it there on your table. You don't you've just have you've it as a thought. You said that, man. You've yeah. said it. You've yeah. said it. You've made the commitment. You put it on a paper. So are you going to, you're going to let yourself down? Are you going to be a pussy? Are you going to be weak? And you're going to break that? You made that commitment, man. Right. You know, it's there on a piece of paper. So... Uh, that's that's strong. You know, he studied supposed... it, and it was like, what is it that causes muscle growth? What is it? And um, he found it was the intensity of exercise. And then there was another bodybuilder, Mike Mensa, who went to compete in the Mr. Olympia, won the Mr. Universe. He took those principles, and he used them. Um, so I read all this stuff, and it was very logical. You know, it made sense. And then I tried it out in the gym, and it worked in the gym. And if I trained more often 
or if I did more in the gym, my progress would slow down or it would stop. As soon as I cut back and I made the workout shorter and more intense, um, my progress went. So it was, for me, it was pretty early on I learned how to train properly. And that's why I was competing. I competed in a world championship after 18 months training, which is pretty much unheard of. That is pretty much unheard of. Now, when you say shorter, more intense workouts, how did you regulate that? Like, that is, that's a huge issue with martial artists is overtraining. Well, they want to do more work than everybody else. They want to work harder than everybody yep. else. And they wind up breaking their body down and showing up for the fight exhausted. Overtraining is a big thing, yeah. And if you, you see, the, the process for muscle growth is you go in the gym and you put stress on the muscle. If you put stress that it's not used to, then it's going to react. You're going to get growth. But you need to recover from that first. You don't go to the gym and grow and then recover later. That's, that's not the way it works. You go, if you've, you know, you give some, your body some stress it's not used to, you'll get a reaction. But before you get the reaction, you have to recover. So if you're not allowing enough time to recover, you just, I use this analogy at, at seminars I do. It's very simplistic, but it gets a point across. If you get a bit of sandpaper and you rub it across the palm of your hand and it's kind of bloody, if you leave it and let it heal up, what's going to happen? The skin's going to develop back a little bit stronger, a little bit thicker than before because it wants to protect against that stress. So that's the process. But if you go and you make your hand bloody, and before it's healed up again, you go and rub it again, what's happening? You're not really getting anywhere. You're just going to have a bloody hand. You know.